Welcome to the Stonehaven application. Here we're going to walk through the various features of the integration with uh, various external systems, monitoring oil and gas sites, as well as using the Vantic platform to monitor and dispatch crews reacting to various situations going on in the field. So first our supervisor is going to walk up to the application and use facial recognition to identify themselves and get logged into the system. So I'll grab a image of myself. My image gets captured. Uh, that image is sent to a backend uh, cognitive services service provided by Azure that we use for facial recognition. And that's going to initiate a two-factor authentication, which in case I'm gonna get sent a authentication code to my cell phone. So 574637 has to be entered in order for me to gain access. Now, if I have a typo in there, like I added an extra six, it will tell me that I have an invalid access code, so I do have to supply the correct code to get authenticated. Uh, now I'm looking at the main dashboard for the, um, for the oil and gas application for Stonehaven, and I'm able to see as the supervisor the, the production performance of all my wells and any problems that might be going on. This data is being delivered primarily from OSI Soft Pi, which is uh, storing all the information coming from each of the well sites, uh, information such as the total vertical depth, the measured depth, and the production rate. This is actually coming from two separate OSI Soft databases that we are combining into one single view. Now, as the supervisor of this project, if an issue were to occur, I would get a real-time alert notification pop up on my screen, and I would see a new issue get inserted into the system. And this is uh, what is called a pipeline overgrowth situation. And as the supervisor, I can pull up a playback video that is associated with this ticket. Now, what I am seeing is drone footage of our Stonehaven pipelines. And in, due to various regulations, we are required to maintain these pipelines in good condition. That means prevent corrosion, prevent leaks, and prevent vegetation overgrowth. The title of this ticket is Pipeline Overgrowth, so I'm expecting to see some vegetation pop up in this video. Now this footage is, is captured by drone operators, but they aren't actually watching the video footage. They are uploading this video footage to Vantic, where our object recognition system is processing the video. And as you can see, using artificial intelligence to automatically identify in the video stream areas of pipeline overgrowth. And this video is showing the bounding boxes where the image recognition system has identified those. Now, that information is being correlated with the drone data stream, which is uh, GPS coordinates. So we can take the GPS coordinates from the drone uh, during the runtime that it was processing that video, that it was capturing that video, and we can throw the pipeline overgrowth uh, events onto a map at the point in time when they were captured. And finally, we can automatically assign and dispatch a crew to take care of the overgrowth. And this is all automated based on the overgrowth recognition coming in the system. So we'll identify an appropriate crew, send them a text message, give them all the details about where the problem is and um, what the problem is, even have the ability to play back the same video so they can see that and then accept uh, the crew request. Now, as the supervisor monitoring this dashboard, I again see in real time what's going on. I can click on this view button here to see the details, and this is going to show me the, uh, the technician information. And once that technician is out on the field and they're uh, making progress towards the site, uh, we can even see the GPS coordinate update with their latest location so I can track the technician's progress uh, throughout the course of this task. And as the technician goes through and completes the job, uh, we will be able to uh, send additional mobile notifications to that technicians. Uh, so we can say, we want you to sign off on the work that you've done once you are complete and specify that you've completed the task. And then here in my dashboard, you can see the issue has been closed. My alert has gone away. Uh, so all this information is being updated in real time. Now imagine this scenario is perhaps a little more serious. Perhaps we have uh, an issue with a pipeline, maybe a leaky pipe. Maybe we have product that's missing. 
And look at that, we have a new issue alert. This time it's an inspection request. So uh, I'm going to drill into well 31 and look at the details of this particular well. And I can see the rate of production that is being produced from the well, and I can see what is stored in the silo on site. And the expected volume is the calculation of the production rate and the runtime in days, um, and, and that is used to calculate the expected volume. And I can also see, looking at the current measurement of the silo of what product is actually stored, that we have missing product. So this is a problem, right? We could have a leaky pipe, we could have a bad sensor, we could have a bad valve. There's any number of problems that could uh, cause this product to go missing. And Stonehaven doesn't want to be losing product. Moreover, if this is a leaky pipe and let's say there is bad weather at Clear Fork or Odessa, where our wells are located, you know, there could be high winds or, or other weather situations. It could uh, cause potential problems, especially if it's something like a gas leak. So once again, we can uh, do our crew dispatch. And in this case, it could be a, a manual request um, or it could be an automated request. The system's capable of doing both. And again, we can uh, do the same type of capabilities we did last time where we have real-time tracking. So if this is a critical issue, we know who our technician is, how to contact them, where they're currently located. We have full insight into what's going on with that problem. And as the technician goes through and solves this issue, we'll get real-time updates. Now, not only are we reading information from OSI Soft Pi, we are writing information to OSI Soft. So if I were to actually open up Well 31, I would see this information uh, in, in Well 31 as well. So here's actually uh, my, my PySoft Explorer. You can see I've got an inspection request and a crew open issue. Uh, that is stored to Pi. So we are reading and writing to Pi. Once our technician completes the task on site, uh, we will be able to uh, know that again in real time. And that'll be based on uh, what, is, uh, what is happening in the field. So how did we build this application? Let me step you real quickly through what it takes to build an application like that in Vantic. Uh, so first of all, we have several elements. We have the backend logic, which is doing things like the image recognition and doing the crew dispatch. And then we have the client components, such as the mobile screens that you saw and the, uh, and the web client that you saw. Uh, so first, I want to talk about some of the backend server logic. Uh, in order to do the crew dispatch, the crew tracking, we have something we call collaboration. And this is a graphical programming interface that allows us to use very simple point and click services that are built into the product to do things like finding technicians in the field based on their GPS coordinates, assigning them to the request, sending them the, the notification alert that they can accept, uh, tracking their location uh, using their mobile phone, which is sending the GPS coordinates into the system, updating their location in the Vantic platform, which are then saved into a table of technician data with the issue. So we know where the technician is uh, relative to the issue that they're responding to. And then ultimately at the end of the process, closing the ticket. And this uh, graphical programming interface doesn't require any, any coding. So this is no code programming that uh, took, took about 20 minutes to, to build. Now the image recognition that you saw in the pipeline video requires a, a couple components. One, there's an Avantic extension source that we use to run object recognition at the edge or at a server or any location you wanna do this type of video processing. And what that means is we are training an object recognition system. In this case, we're using something called YOLO, which stands for you only look once, in conjunction with uh, another open source machine learning uh, system called TensorFlow from Google to train the image recognition system to find overgrowth in the pipeline. We run the video through the image recognition system. It turns that data into digital readings, which we can then respond to with our crew requ request collaboration. And then the last component I wanna talk about are the client components. In order to do the facial recognition, I was able to import a project from another uh, Vantic project that uh, focuses on facial recognition for security. And 
uh, by doing so, I didn't actually have to code any of the, uh, the facial recognition myself. I was just able to reuse code from another project that we make available to all our Vantic customers. Um, and on the client side, we have a very simple a WYSIWYG drag and drop editor that I can use to build all my, my pages. So for example, if you want to see the, uh, the dashboard page, this is just a series of uh, widgets that I can drag and drop onto the system, such as tables, and then creating what we call data streams, which specify the kind of information that are gonna show up in this table. In this case, I'm using data coming back from the OSI Soft API and throwing them into a data table widget and displaying them uh, on the backdrop of a, a card so that it looks nice. Um, so those are all the elements that are required to build an application such as this. The development time is very, very short uh, in order to create this type of project. And even doing the image recognition is fairly easy to do. Um, it requires some specialization knowing how to do that. But it, once you do, it's very easy to integrate with the Vantic system and apply automation and artificial intelligence to whatever type of tasks you would apply to that sort of object recognition. So uh, that is the, the demonstration. And if you have any further questions, please let us know.